everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be taking a look at the Transformers Legacy Evolution Wave 3 Voyager Class Nemesis Leo Prime. Let me know what you think of this figure in the comment section down below. Is it a pickup or a pass? Now let's take a look at the figure's packaging. So here we have the packaging. Starting at the very front here, we have Transformers on the side. We have the Legacy Evolution logo at the bottom. We have Nemesis Leo Prime in white text with a white Maximal symbol with a really cool slash through it. A really nice artwork shot of Nemesis Leo Prime in his line mode with the sharp teeth and the black mane looking very menacing and scary. We have an open way of displaying the figure in the packaging. At the top, there's another Legacy Evolution logo with a QR code. If you do scan that, that will show his stats. On the side, we have two artwork shots of Nemesis Leo Prime really close up of his face. I do apologize about the glare. And of course, the other shot is really more of a wide shot shot him running with all these accessories looking very menacing and scary. On the back he transforms in 35 steps or several product shots showing off his robot, his line mode, and of course the remaining two, his evil fusion gimmick. And if you were wondering, it's the exact same gimmick as the previous use of this mold, the Leo Prime figure, which I will do a comparison of at some point in this video. And on the final side we have half of the Legacy Evolution artwork, so if you do get another Voyager from this line and put both boxes together, you can complete the artwork. And that is pretty much it for the packaging, so let's now get the review. Here we have Nemesis Leo Prime in his robot mode. Let's take a look at the details. Starting at the very top with a head scope, we have some really nice metallic blue flies with some gunmetal gray for the main battle mask, with some silver for the crest section and the antenna sections on the side of the head. As for the main helmet section, it's mostly made out of that kind of dark gray plastic. As for one of the shoulders, it's actually the entire lion head and mane, which looks so cool. I'm not going to spend that much time in the detail on this, because of course I'll repeat them later in the line mode. I'll go into greater detail, of course, once he's actually transformed. But just quickly taking a look at it, of course, we have the entire main section done in a black plastic, but molded very well with a really cool wavy fur design and I do like the gunmetal gray for the actual lion face. There's some black for the nose and some silver for the teeth and there's some white and black for the eyes and you can actually have the mouth open or closed for the lion head which I think is a really nice feature. I actually prefer it open because I think it just makes it look that much more cooler and of course the entire other shoulder is actually a completely different design. This actually does form the tail and the back portion of the lion mode but I really do like the mismatch design. There's actually some texturing on this section and it's mostly made out of of course that kind of gunmetal gray plastic and there's some more texturing on the thighs and the feet, which I think is a really nice detail that they didn't have to do. As for, of course, the chest, it's actually some more of that mismatch today. We actually have some pistons and the mechanical detail on this side. And this side, it's actually a maximal symbol with some silver and gunmetal gray. And if you do open this up, it does reveal the matrix chamber and the matrix of leadership, which is really cool. And it's, of course, painted in some nice silver and uh, metallic blue. And there's actually a uh, post there, which is Blast Fight Piece compatible. It's the same feature on Leo Prime. If you don't know, this is a dead re repaint of the original, of course, Voyager Class the Legacy Evolution Leo Prime, which I'll make a comparison to in just a sec, but it has that same feature, which is really cool, so you can take an effects piece and plug it on there and do some really cool poses for fun or for stop motions or whatever. And you can, of course, just close this right up. And, of course, as for the rest of the details, some really nice silver and gunmetal gray for the rest of the stomach region, and some metallic blue and black for the rest of the crotch and waist, and some more texturing and gunmetal gray for the thighs. And I do like these huge knee pads done in black, and I love the feet with a really cool knuckle design and some texturing, some more of that black gunmetal gray, and the metallic blue for the nails looks absolutely awesome. And, of course, if we do look at the back, there is quite a bit of kibble. Of course, if you do have the Leo Prime figure, you know kind of what to expect here. That We do have the, you know, front legs of the line mode kind of on the back here, which really doesn't bother me. And everything else is pretty well filled in. You know, the legs, really not much gaps or anything. Of course, we actually have a little swivel joints, empty holes there, but that really doesn't bother me that much. And overall, I think design-wise, they did a really good job with this figure. So now for articulation, the head can look up and down, and of course, side to side. As for the articulation for the arms, I really don't think the articulation is like, you know, changed or worse on either arm, you know, because of course, the design of the shoulder is different. I think it's the same for both sides. So the arm can move forward and back out to the side, there is rotation at the bicep, there is an elbow bend, no wrist rotation, mostly due to transformation, there is a fully uncompromised waist rotation, the legs can kick forward and back, and of course out to the side, there is some slight rotation at the top, there is rotation at the knee, there is a knee bend to a very good degree, and you can actually lock the knees into place if you want to, which is a really nice feature, there's also a very good ankle pivot, there's also rotation at the ankle as well, so um, pretty good articulation, I think the only thing that could be a little bit better is of course the hand, unfortunately there is no wrist rotation, which again was expected because the articulation is the exact same as the previous version Leo Prime, so nothing surprising there. Um, 
And it's, of course, mostly really due to transmission. You actually fold the hands in, so I can slightly give them some slack in that aspect. But as for accessories, they actually just come with the exact same ones that came with Leo Prime, but actually another accessory. So the new one is this really cool rifle, and you can store all the accessories in several different ways. Of course, you can really customize it. I'm just going to show you the ways that actually shows in the instructions. But again, there is tabs and ports and slots pretty much all over this figure, so you can really customize it to however you wish. But overall, looking very cool. All the accessories are actually Blast Fit piece compatible, which is really nice. You can really deck this out with some, you know, plastic pieces and have them pretty much being a killing machine, but I think this is pretty cool, and this can actually separate for actually one of the ways of storing, but for the first way of storing these accessories, again, uh, all the other four accessories that I'm about to show you came with Leo Prime, of course, just in a different color. They're now done in black, so these can actually store at the back. I'm not actually going to tab them in because it's kind of into them. I'm going to show you where you can, so if you uh, want to store these, of course, not openly on his hands or any other place, if you don't want to see them, you can actually store them back here. There are slots, and of course, there is tabs. Again, it's kind of hard to show on camera because it's such a tight space, but you can if you want to. You can actually leave them there, even I'm pretty sure during transformation, which is a really nice feature, but one of the main ways you can actually store these is actually on the line heads. There is, of course, a tab there and a slot on the line head, and you're just going to tab that into place just like that, and then you're going to go to the back. You might have to move a bit of the kibble out of the way, just so, of course, you can have some more space. Just have that into place right there. And then you're going to hinge this entire section out um, pretty much on top of the line head. I think this is a really cool gimmick. Of course, same feature, same storage as Leo Prime, nothing different or anything. And then you're going to bring in these other two identical uh, small pistols, which are also Blast Pick Piece compatible. You're going to use, of course, this post, and there is a port right there. And that will just plug into place like that. And then you're going to get the other one, put it in like that. As for the rifle, you're supposed to have him molded, and this is pretty much one of the main ways you can store all the accessories. Again, quite customizable. I'm really just showing, of course, how the instructions show it, but I think this looks very cool. I think this is probably my preferred way of storing the accessories, but again, quite a few customized options. You can, you know, put them on the back. You can leave them off to the side. Really just up to you of how you think it looks best, but I think that looks really, really cool in my opinion. So now for the next way, I think this is probably pretty crazy, but I'm going to show it. So you're going to pretty much remove these accessories. As for this way, actually, you do not use these uh, smaller ones. You can actually just kind of fold these back inside and just not even use them, or you can remove them. Either way, I'm just going to fold those back inside. You're actually going to remove the rifle, and for this mode, you're actually going to split this in half and a course put either one in either hand you're actually going to go to the back here you're going to flip the uh, pause out and forward we're going to go back to the front actually going to flip these blades out, which I do have to say look really cool, but it would have been nice if they actually uh, made these out of that nice metallic blue color. Sometimes it can be a bit of a trouble and pain to actually get these out, just kind of, you know, prime out. But again, I think they probably would have looked better, not in black. I think they would have been really nice if they were actually painted or made out of like a blue. I think they would have looked a lot better. And then again, just kind of flip these blades out. can be a bit of a pain. There we go. As for the remaining accessories, you're actually going to flip these panels out that are on the arm. So just bring these out like that. Same thing on the other side. Bring these out. You're actually going to tab the accessories into those slots. So these little long ones actually just use the tab and there is a whole port there and you just tab them into place. It is a bit odd that we're actually using the tab accessories and not the ones with the actual port. You might think I'm doing this wrong, but I actually checked the instructions. You are supposed to use these, which is a bit weird. You think you'd use the ones with the actual port to you know, match uh, the post and everything, but I don't really understand it. But you know, of course you use those. I think that looks really cool in my opinion. As for, of course, these two, you can, again, they're not identical weapons. They break in half and you can literally put them in either hand. I'm just gonna kind of put in random and then you just store them in there like that. And here is the second major way of storing the accessories. You know, those remaining two, you can just kind of keep in there. But there it is. It looks, you know, absolutely insane. Of course, they have the huge daggers and the other weapons there looking super cool. But that is pretty much it for accessory storage. Let's now get down to a few quick comparisons. Here he is with the original use of the small that being Leo Prime from Legacy Evolution Wave 1. I do apologize if he's kind of bursting, you know, because I have a white background and most of this figure is white, so hopefully you can see it uh, well. But mold-wise, they are the exact same thing. The only changes, of course, is this accessory. Um, the other four, of course, are identical. They're on this figure. I actually have them stored inside the line head and the back. 
but that's just kind of typically how I like to store it. But let me know in the comments section below, of course, between these two, which version do you prefer? I have to say, I probably like the Nemesis Leo Prime more, because I can always really go for a Nemesis version of anything. A Nemesis, you know, Prime, a Nemesis Leo Prime. I'm actually really hoping they maybe make a Nemesis Armada Optimus Prime, because we're, of course, we're going to get that Commander class. I think they'll probably get that and just, you know, paint it black or kind of a purple. I think that'll look pretty cool. And now for one more comparison. Here is with another Voyager from Legacy Evolution. Here is with Metal Hawk. And that is pretty much it for comparisons and this robot mode. Let's now get down to transformation. Now for transformation, what you're going to do is turn to the very back of the figure. You're actually going to hinge the paws of the front legs down. You're actually going to rotate them around. Do the same thing on the other side. Just hinge these down. Rotate them around, you're going to get this entire back panel here, hinge this out, and then move the arms all the way forward just to get some added clearance. You're going to hinge the line head and this entire uh, other shoulder piece to the side, and then of course hinge this entire assembly up like this. So just make sure, of course, the line head is right above the robot mode head, and of course this entire back section here actually does form the tail, so make sure this is at the very bottom near the legs, like that. Which I actually think is a pretty cool mechanical part of the transformation. I think it's pretty cool. Then you're going to rotate at the bicep, like that. Same thing on the other side, just rotate at the bicep, and then hinge the hand all the way forward, like that, hinge the hand forward, and then hinge these sections out and up like that just to get some more space and clearance. Everything should really look like this right now. Then you're going to open up this entire section here, just kind of get your nail in there, open this up. There's tabs on this side and of course slots on that side. You're going to push the head in and this section can be a bit difficult. You just kind of get, got to get your nail in there and just open up this entire panel here like that. Just open this up, there we go. And then just rotate this around and then just push this entire assembly back into place. And then just push these in like that. And unfortunately, this whole matrix chamber door <laughs> opens quite a bit. So if you see me closing that, that is why it really does not stay tabbed into place, unfortunately. And then you're just going to kind of realign this panel here with the arm and make sure it's flat like that. So the same thing on your side, just hinge that up and make sure all of this is flat like that, and now we can actually start tabbing some stuff together. So there is actually a slot right there, and there is a tab pretty much on the inside of the line head. So just align that up, and make sure that it's nice and tabbed into place, like that. There we go. Same thing on the other side. Just make sure that's nice and tabbed into place, like that. And then these panels here will actually reconnect uh, together. So there is, of course, tabs on this side, slots on that side, and that will just kind of solidify everything. Make sure that hand stays down. And then you're going to bring these panels out. Sometimes some things can untab, so I'm going to have to, you know, reconnect some things after a while because it can be a bit messy at times. But there is a slot on the inside and there is a tab right there. So just tab the shoulder into place like that. There we go. And just tap that back into place like that. And then this will just kind of uh, fold over top of the shoulder. And there we have one side done. Same thing on the other side. So just hinge this panel out, get the shoulder. There's a tab there and a slot right there. And then just tab that into place and then just flip that over top. Then you can get this little fur piece that'll just cover, you know, the hands and stuff and then just flip that down. Let's now move down to the legs, to the back. So you're going to rotate these around, rotate them around. So you're going to flip in the heel spurs, flip in the heel spurs, then rotate at the ankle around, rotate at the ankle around like that. And this part can be a bit tricky because the hinges on my copy are so tight. So just hinge this entire section up. It should tab into place like that. I'm pretty sure it's this leg. For some reason, this leg is so much more tight than this one. I really don't know about, don't know why. So just hinge this up and then tab that into place like that. And then just kind of put the legs in the position that you like. And then just the remaining few steps, flip the tail out. So this entire section here, there is tabs on this and there is slots on the main body that will tab into place like that. And then of course hinge this in and just kind of compact everything together. And of course you can just have them sit there. And that is pretty much it for transformation. So let's now take a look at the details. 
So here we have Nemesis Leo Prime in his line mode. Let's take a look at the details, starting at the very front with that entire lion head and face. Looking really cool with that kind of gunmetal gray, almost charcoal black color for the face, with some black and white for the eyes, with some black for the nose, and silverish white for the teeth. And of course, the mouth can open and close. I love them, and I think they did a really good job on this figure and Leo Prime. Really good job with the sculpt work. Of course, kind of wavy fur detail, and I do like the color of the black, looking very dark and evil. There's actually some sculpted in ears as well. I we actually have some more fur down here. I do have a kind complaint though they of course put this piece here to complete the main and also cover up some of this but unfortunately you can still somewhat see the hands there so it would have been nice if this was a slightly bigger piece but a very minor complaint at that and of course we actually have the front legs here really nice metallic glue for the sharp nails or claws it's actually some sculpted in knuckles with some texturing on the legs and the shoulder and i do again really like that kind of charcoal black almost silver gunmetal gray color a bit hard to describe but you know what i mean of course there's some more at that midsection some texturing there as well and there's some more at the back of the legs the hind legs of course and the back feet or back legs here are pretty much the same design as the front of course just slightly bigger and of course the leg itself is in a slight uh, slightly different position and angle we do have the tail which i think is a bit simple i think that was probably one of my major complaints with leo prime the tail is a bit simple and also it's out of proportion it seems a bit too small compared to the rest of the body of the line that's just in my opinion anyway but of course kind of molded or sculpted at an angle and it's mostly done in black but there's actually a bit of hair kind of fur uh detailing on the tip which is always nice to see and unfortunately the articulation is is quite limited really can only hinge up and down would have been nice if there was like a ball joint and if it was a little bit bigger i think that would have been nice too but detail wise i'm very impressed i do have to say i think the eyes did a much better job on this figure that was probably one of the major controversial complaints with the past leo prime he had pretty much no detail in the eyes so he looked like pretty much possessed it looked really off so i think i think they probably heard our complaints and did a much better job with this figure here um but now for articulation, of course, as I mentioned before, the mouth can open and close, the tail can hinge up and down. As for, of course, the legs, they can hinge forward and back. There's also, of course, rotation uh, all the way around if you want to. As for the back legs, there is much more articulation because these are actually the robot mode legs, so you can hinge them forward and back. There's also rotation. There's also, of course, you can actually use this other hinge. Technically, you kind of have to untab it, but if you want to, this can also hinge on a separate hinge forward and back as well. So pretty good articulation. It would be nice, again, if the tail had a bit more articulation but overall the exact same as leo prime so i did expect this there was nothing surprising but as for accessory storage kind of like the robot mode there is quite a few options there's several tabs and at areas that actually do not even show the instructions but you can use them but of course i'm really just going to show what the instructions show so what you're going to do is actually open up this entire panel here this was of course used before in the robot mode you're actually going to grab this new rifle that wasn't included with leo prime you're going to separate it and you can put it in either port really doesn't matter but you're going to store these like that on those ports using those pegs from the handle there we go like that and then you're going to flip these little pieces forward like that which um, if you're wondering what I mean by customization there's actually a slot here so if you didn't want to use this panel again by the instructions they show you using this but if you don't want to use that you can just use this slot instead so there's quite a few options that you can see you know here and there uh, really to customize which I think is a really nice fun playable option and then you're just going to get these longer ones of course there's a tab and there's that port and that is just going to tab into place just like that and then you flip to the other side grab the other one and have that into place like that and for this mode by the instructions they actually do not even show you using those remaining two these smaller ones they just kind of have them leaving off to the side but if you want to of course you can put them in other areas but this is how they show it in the instructions and i think it looks pretty cool very weaponized and again all these weapons are blast effect piece compatible so you can really you know armor this guy up but that is pretty much it for weapon storage um there is actually one last thing that i really can't show you but i did mention before you can actually leave some accessories in there so as you can see of course there is this entire section here you could just of course collapse these back into place if you wanted to also these long uh slender ones there is actually an entire compartment that i actually showed in the robot mode technically i've done it before you can actually just leave them in there you can actually you know untransform it and just put them in there and leave them in there if you want to but i typically just kind of leave them off to the side because i don't want to lose anything or forget where i put them but i'm just going to take those all off to the side and close that up so let's now get down to a few quick comparisons here he is with the original leo prime 
And as you can see, the eyes just look so weird. That was one of the major complaints people had. He looked kind of possessed and just off. Also, the face didn't really have enough detail. It was just kind of white. It seemed a bit boring and bland. Um, and also, the teeth were white, too. So it really, it, there, there could have been some more paint apps, some more details for the face altogether. I think they did a much better job with this. I think they probably heard our complaints and realized they should have added more detail. So I'm really glad they actually listened to us. But um, really, just down to personal preference of the design, you know, which one you like more. I always really like a good, you know, Nemesis design nemesis prime um nemesis armada optimus prime i'm assuming we're probably going to get one of those so i'm 100 percent down for them making this figure and i have to say i probably like this design more that's just my personal opinion but let me know in the comment section below between the two which one do you like more and now for another decepticon comparison here he is with um shrapnel looking pretty cool side by side and that is pretty much it for comparisons. So let's now get down to reverse transformation. So what you're going to do is, of course, just go to the back. You're actually going to untab this entire panel section here, hinge this up, just kind of wiggle it loose like that. It can be a bit, there we go. Just loosen that, just hinge the section back up. You're going to fold in the tail like that. You can then hinge and fully extend the legs. You're going to fully extend it here as well, like that. So just tab these back in, into place. You're going to then rotate at the leg, rotate at the leg. And then you're going to actually rotate at the ankle as well. Rotate at the ankle. And then you can flip out the heel spurs. Just got to get your nail in there, you know, pop those out like that. Same thing for the other one. Just pop those out. And there we have the legs all done. So let me just kind of hinge these back into place. Just straighten everything up. And I will have to adjust the camera so you can see what I'm doing. And now what you want to do is actually untab this entire shoulder here. You're actually going to flip this panel out just to get some added clearance. So untab that. Hinge this panel out. Untab that. And then you're going to untab the entire arm from the line head like that. And now it's a bit messy, so I'm going to go a bit slow so you can see what I'm doing. You're going to hinge the section uh, down here. You're going to flip the head out, rotate this around. There is, of course, slots on this piece here. There is tabs in the back that will just tap into place. And then these sections here will actually form the chest. As you can see, there's tabs on this side, slots on that side. That'll just tab together. And again, that little matrix door just does not want to stay closed. You're going to rotate out the bicep, flip the hand forward, and then just tab this section in the back. Rotate the entire paw around, and that will just collapse up like that. Do the same thing on the other side. Rotate out the bicep, flip the hand forward, tab this panel back, and then you can rotate the paw around and flip that up. And this last portion, you're going to try and move pretty much the arms out of the way as much as possible just to get some clearance. You're going to move to the back. The, uh, of course, entire uh, tail portion and the head portion will rotate and move back to where they were as the shoulders. And then these will just kind of collapse over the arms, which, again, I just think is so cool to have a line head as a shoulder. So just kind of straighten everything up. Things are a bit messy right now. There we go. And then go to the back and make sure this panel here is firmly placed there. And there we have the reverse transformation. Hopefully you can see every step. You know, this transformation is pretty complex and messy, but I try to go slow so you can see everything. That is it for reverse transformation. Let's now get down to the final thoughts. Now for the final thoughts for the Transformers Legacy Evolution Wave 3 Voyager Class Nemesis Leo Prime. I think overall this figure is pretty good. I do have to say this isn't a must purchase or a must buy because this is just a direct repaint of the Legacy Evolution Wave 1 Voyager Class Leo Prime. I do think it's a good figure. I think this is probably my preferred deco version of the two because I can always really go for a Nemesis version of a Prime, you know, or Armada Optimus Prime or Leo Prime. I think it just always looks really cool. I really like the dark, you know, evil colors, the metallic blue. I think it just works for this mold. Um, and again, of course, there is more interesting figures in Legacy uh, Evolution Wave 3. You know, there's going to be the Titan Class Nemesis. There's the Commander Class Armada Optimus Prime. Would I choose those figures over this one? Absolutely yes. But if you find this maybe in the store, if you have like 35 bucks to spare, I would say buy it because I think it's a pretty fun figure. I do have to say probably the tolerances are uh, better on this copy or, or this version of the mold than the other one. Of course, that could just be me. It could be completely opposite for if you get this figure. I really do not know. It's probably just kind of look of the draw, but I still think pretty good tolerances, really good 
good articulation, pretty standard for a Voyager class figure. Fortunately, there is no wrist rotation in the robot mode, but that's mostly due to transformation, so I can kind of understand that. Um, accessories, um, there's actually quite a few, so it comes with the same four simple pistols that came with the Leo Prime version of this mold. It also comes with a brand new rifle, which can split into two, and you can store all six of those accessories several different ways, and six accessories is pretty good for a Voyager class figure. Of course, that being said, they are quite small. They're just little pistols, but still, it's kind of cool how there's so many, and you can store them in so many different ways. Really fun, playable factor there, and all of them are blast to piece compatible, so you can do some really fun poses for fun, for stop motions, uh, for pictures, for videos, really anything if you want to. Um, I do have to say the articulation for the land mode, you know, it's the exact same as Leo Prime, so nothing uh, crazy there. I do have to say probably the tail is out of proportion with the rest of the line body. It just seems too small. Also, it would have been nice if there was some more articulation because there really isn't any. It can hinge up and down, but actually that hinge is only there so you can fold it in for transformation. So they didn't put it there specifically for the tail to move. So it would have been nice if there was like a ball joint and it would be nice if it was bigger. But as for the legs, pretty good articulation. Actually, the hind legs specifically, they have a lot of articulation because they're actually Actually, the robot mode legs, of course, transform, so you can do some really cool running poses like you can see here, which is really fun. And the mouth can open and close. I do have to say the face of the line in this version is a huge improvement over the last one because a lot of people just could not stop talking about Leo Prime's eyes in the line mode. They were like no detail, no color, so it was like possessed. It looked really weird. It was like orange eyes. It just looked off. Kind of like Cheetor from Kingdom, you know, his was a solid color eye, so it just looked off as well. I think they heard our complaints. I think they uh, definitely corrected it and fixed it with this. So I'm really glad they actually listened to us and fixed it with this, which is really cool to see. Of course, if you like to customize, I'm assuming probably someone did, you know, draw or like uh, paint their own eyes for Leo Prime. So if you do that, of course you could, but I'm actually really glad they uh, were able to change that with this because they could have gone the cheap route. They could have just not changed anything, but they actually included a new accessory and improved upon the face for the line mode. I do have to say the entire mane is so well detailed, really well sculpted, really cool wavy kind of fur design. And I really do like how it kind of wraps around the entire shoulder of the um the front legs, and I do like how it kind of wraps around the bottom portion of the head. That being said, there is a panel there to cover some of the kibble. It does cover the majority, but of course the hands actually do end up being in the front of the line mode, so you can still somewhat see the open palm or the open hand there, so if that piece was just a tad bit bigger, I think it would have been better, but it does it does do the job. It does the majority, it really covers it up. I do have to say, there's um, actually a really big plus for just this mold in general, not specifically to Nemesis Leo Prime, because um, quite a few people have complained in the past, you know, with Beast Wars, Masterpiece figures, with, you know, Kingdom figures, typically when it's a beast, you know, of any, uh, you know, version or mold or character, typically all the kibble kind of ends up on the bottom of the beast. I do have to say, with this mold, I think they did a pretty good job because the, the bottom is pretty clean. There's just a tiny bit of panels and stuff, but, you know, really the only, I guess you could say, kibble is you do kind of see the shoulder or the, the knee pads in the back, but that really doesn't bother me that much. It actually kind of looks like armor to me, so I do recommend this figure. Again, I do have to stress and say again that it's a good figure is it a must buy? No. Like if you're on a budget and you only want to get like the figures that you just need to get or have to get that are just absolutely amazing. If you already have Leo Prime, you don't have to get this one. If you don't have any of them, I would suggest to get this one. But of course, if again, are you if you're if you're on a budget, I would suggest of course go to you know get like Armada Megatron, maybe some of the deluxes like DevCon, the core classes. I would say this is like if you know you find on clearance, I would get it. That's kind of one of those type of figures. But I think it's pretty cool. I really do hope you enjoyed this review. I actually will be getting Armada Megatron very soon to review, so make sure you stay tuned for that. And I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.